Hello and welcome to Health Matters. We are so glad you could join us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Have you ever heard the term sleep is overrated? Well, to hear the experts, people don't take sleep seriously enough. According to statistics from the Sleep Foundation, on the average, we spend about two hours per night dreaming. In a normal sleep period, a person experiences four to six sleep cycles. REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep makes up between 20 and 25 percent of total sleep in healthy adults. On the show with me today is consultant psychiatrist and head of sleep disorders unit, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Yaba, Dr. Olajide Obembe. He joins us virtually from Lagos. You're welcome to the show, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Now, we know that sleep is good for rest. What else is sleep good for? Yes, uh, sleep is good for all the all the facets of our functioning as humans. Um, the looking at we can look at sleep just the same way we look at the balanced diet. When we talk about diet, when we talk about those things that are good for the good functioning of the body, we we talk about diet. We talk about exercise. The same way we also need to talk about sleep. Sleep is good for our well-being, just the same way our feeding is good for our well-being, and the same way physical exercise is good for our well-being. So sleep is one of the pillars of our well-being. Okay. How much sleep does a person need? And does the person have to take the sleep all at once, or can the person add up bits of sleep during the day and make up the total amount? Yes, the, the the major sleep the major sleep we need and the the uh, part of our sleep that is highly essential is the sleep we have in the night because um, the sleep has various stages. Mm -hmm. We have uh, stage one, we have stage two, we have stage three, then we have the REM sleep, and each of these stages subserves uh, different functions. Different during this the, the course of our sleep, there are some body, so some of our biological functions that takes place. There are some secretion of hormones that takes place at each point in time during our sleep. So such hormones will not take the secretion of such hormone will not take place even if we sleep during the day. Yes, the uh, sleeping during the day could be good at times where we have a short nap, just to uh, complement what we have in the night. But the major sleep we need is the sleep we need at night. And this varies between six to like nine hours. But it depends on individual uh, uh, differences. There are people who need up to eight hours of night sleep before they will be able to perform their function very well during the day. There are also people who don't need up to that that can function very well with sleep of six hours. So there are people we call the short sleepers. So with five to six hours, they are good, they can function well. But majority of people need averagely seven to eight hours for them to be able to function in very well during the day. And when we talk about sleep, it's not just about the duration. It's not just the, a matter of how many hours have we slept. It's, it has also uh, it, it also have, uh, have to do with uh, the the depth of our sleep. How deep is the sleep? Then what is the quality of the sleep? So all this we are able to assess by the way we feel in the morning. When we feel refreshed, do we feel refreshed? Do we feel tired? Do we have headache? So all these things are very important. They are important pointers to the kind of sleep we have, whether the sleep is good enough or, or not. Then also, how active are we during the day? Are we able to do our, our work very well? Do we have good energy, energy level? How is our emotion? Because if we don't sleep well, we have problem with our emotion regulation. Then we also have problem with our concentration. So people who don't sleep well at night, when they work, they are, they, they, they are prone to making uh, mistakes that they wouldn't have made if they had rested well. So some of these people at some point may need to nap 
leave it for like 30 minutes during the day, maybe 15 minutes during the day so that they can have this, uh, uh, they can refresh their brain so that they can, they will be able to carry on during the day. You, you've spoken about some short-term uh, consequences of lack of sleep. Are there any long-term consequences of not sleeping well? Yes, yeah, there are long-term consequences of not sleeping well. Like I said, I said the, the sleep is as good as when we talk about our feeding. So sleep as a, when we don't sleep well, there are short-term consequences, there are also long-term consequences. The, because the sleep subserves different function. And one of these function is, for instance, in the brain, the, the sleep is involved in the removal of waste product from the brain. So people who are not sleeping well for a long time are uh, prone to developing uh, illnesses of the brain that we call the dementia. So because there are some products, there are some waste products in the brain that the body system on its own will remove, but this is only done during sleep. Then also our the the, the cardiovascular system, that is the our heart, the, the blood, uh, blood pressure all these things can be affected. Now there is a relationship between the blood pressure and sleep. When the blood pressure is high, it's difficult for an individual to have a good sleep. Also, when an individual does not have a good sleep, it also leads to increase in blood pressure. So the two of them can increase each other, which in the long run may lead to any complications that can come up from uncontrolled uh, blood pressure. Also, the immune system, our immune system also need good sleep. When the sleep is bad, an individual is prone to developing um, various infections that under normal circumstances, it will, it, it will have been able to handle. But because of poor sleep, and uh, which leads to uh, suppression in the immune system, such an individual is prone to developing such uh, illnesses. It also affects the, when we talk in terms of our weight control, diabetes, all these things, because sleep affects the metabolism. So there's no organ in the body that will not, at one point or the other, will be affected if there is problem with sleep. And now this also de depends on which, what type of sleep disorder are we talking about. There are different sleep disorders. There is insomnia disorder. These are the people who are not who are having problem initiating or I mean maintaining their sleep. There is hypersomnolence. Those are the people that the problem they have is that they are sleeping too much. Then there is also sleep related breathing disorder. This is where we have what we call the obstructive sleep apnea. So the people with this particular group, particular uh, sleep disorder, they are prone to developing hypertension, obesity, diabetes, mellitus, and they can even have um, heart problem. So that's why when, we, uh, when it is discovered that an individual is having this uh, obstructive sleep apnea, most especially the severe one, the necessary treatment are usually advised. Is it true that sleep is good for the memory? Yes, very correct. Sleep is good for the memory, and this has been um, has been found in different researches that have been replicated in different uh, studies. That good sleep helps memory. So one of the major function of the uh, of, of sleep is what we call memory consolidation. So with good sleep, we can retain our memory longer. The the way it works is um. The, the brain the brain the brain stores information in uh, there is a part of brain that subserves I mean that, that function like a small memory card that can contain a limited number of information. So when we learn whatever we learn for the first time are stored in this part of the brain. But when we sleep the information in this in quote this small memory card is moved to the other part of the brain that is large enough to take information and that we can store information there for a very long time. So memory helps in movement of information from the short term 
memory to the long-term memory. And that is what we call the memory consolidation. So when this is done, there is a space for an individual to learn new things. So uh, good sleep helps us in learning. It helps us also in keeping the memory of what we have learned. That's very profound because I know quite a number of students who, instead of sleeping, read all night uh, and do that for many days. So, so this information is really good for the students. But having said that, I must ask you, for somebody who has problems sleeping, I think that's what you called insomnia. They, they don't sleep in time. Uh, and then when they, they sleep, it's difficult to stay asleep. What can they do to improve the sleep experience? Yes, um, the, the first is to know uh, why an individual is having difficulty initiating and maintaining sleep um, with, um, when the, uh, with available um, circumstance for such an individual to sleep. So the, I think the first thing is to know why an individual is having such a problem. So when, we know, when, it, when the, the reason or the cause is known, then the, the management can follow uh, based on what is discovered. But be as it may, I think the, the, the reason, I mean, the, one of the, the major causes of insomnia is, um, is, is worry. Worry and anxiety can be a major can be a major cause of insomnia in most people. Then, uh, and this worry and anxiety also go along with the personality of an individual. So there are some people that right from time they have been having one or or, or two or I mean they've been having some issue with their sleep because of their lifestyle. So lifestyle is also important. You need to know what is the lifestyle of this individual. Is it individual that sleeps in the afternoon? Is it an individual that takes coffee close to the sleep period? Is it an individual that um, does his uh, physical exercise at the wrong time? So we need to know all this. When we know what the cause is, then we can uh, manage. Also, some people, because of um, the, the lifestyle not being compatible, uh, compatible with good sleep, like some people, because for instance, students. So when they are supposed to sleep, you don't want to sleep, you want to read. So the, the sleep cycle, the, the sleep wake cycle has been distorted. So when the sleep wake cycle is distorted, then we need to actually look at it and see how we can reset it. Because our body, there is a, there is a clock in our body, which we call the biological clock, which work in tandem with the envir environment uh, clock. So there's just little, the, the difference between the two is just a matter of minutes. So the same way we have the 24 hour clock, then our body also run its own course. So there is, when there is a disruption in the way these two clocks work, there could, be, there could be problem with sleep. So what we do is we teach sleep hygiene, then whatever, if we discover any lifestyle that is not compatible with good sleep, we also correct it. Now that you talk about the environment, some people insist on sleeping with uh, covers over their eyes, drawing the curtains, and even playing some white noise. Is this part of sleep hygiene? Yes, it's part of sleep hygiene. Part of sleep hygiene is, um, the, for most people, keeping the environment a bit dark. You understand, it's very important. That, that, that's a very single important factor. Because like uh, the other time I talk about the sleep-wake cycle, you understand, I talk about the, the relationship between our body clock and the environment clock. And what is responsible with setting this clock is the light. So when we are exposed to light, the, the, uh, most especially towards the period that we need to sleep, too much bright light can disrupt the sleep system. So that's why it's advised for most people, if you want to enjoy your sleep, most especially those people that have challenges with sleep, it's encouraged that they put up, um, I mean, make, don't, don't use bright light in their rooms. So it helps. What do you think about exercise before sleeping? 
Is that good? Yes, exercise is good, but the, we need to make it clear. When we say exercise before sleep, it's not, I mean, there should be at least the, 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 the space of two hours between the time you finish your exercise and the time you are ready to sleep. So it's not good for, 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 for the exercise to eat into the sleep time. So it's not, it's not a good idea for you to exercise till like eight o'clock, then by nine you are going to bed. No, if you are too tired, you may not be able to sleep. The idea of exercise is to keep the body fit and to enable the body to be able to relax. It's not that, advice, I mean, exercise is advised to keep people tired so that they can sleep, no. So you can either exercise in the morning or in the evening. If you do it in the evening, make sure it's not too close to your sleep uh, period. Because one of the things we advise in sleep hygiene is uh, adequate time to actually wind down. You understand? For an individual to relax, you sit down, you are not doing it. Please stay with us. All right. Some more right after now. Welcome back. It's still Health Matters. And we're talking about the importance of sleep. We have uh, Dr. Olajide Obimbe, consultant psychiatrist and head of sleep disorders unit, Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Yaba. Since you talk about winding down, doctor, some people would swear. <laughs> they insist that a bit of alcohol helps them sleep well. Does alcohol really help a person sleep well? Okay, so uh, winding down uh, 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 is different from wind down. <laughs> I'm talking of taking time to relax. Now, back to the question of whether the alcohol is good for sleep or not. Yes, alcohol can, can um, induce sleep. It can induce sleep, but the problem with alcohol is that one, there could be a breaking in the sleep as uh, individual as the night goes on. So the, the individual may be having different arousals, different, I mean, several uh, waking along, the, uh, along the, the night, which in the long run may make the sleep poor. That's one. Then number two, the alcohol, when an individual uses alcohol regularly to initiate sleep, there is going to be increase in quantity. That is, there will be development of tolerance. So the individual may need to be increasing the, the volume or the quantity of alcohol he uses to initiate that sleep. So in the long run, the, people, the, the individual may develop a problem of alcoholism. So alcohol is actually not advised to use to manage a difficulty with sleep because of these problems. Okay, I noticed that over the years, sleep patterns change, probably because of the age of the person. Uh, older people tend to sleep earlier, wake up earlier, sleep less. Are, are, they, are, are they supposed to change with aging and how should they change the patterns? Yes, the, the, actually the, there is a change in the quantity and the quality of sleep an individual uh, experiences as such an individual uh, ages. So we all know that you, the babies, they sleep more. Just from the pregnancy, the baby in the womb is sleeping almost all the time. Then as when the baby is out, the major part of the day is the baby is always sleeping, except when the mother needs to breastfeed. Then so this sleep, reduces from that point to the time that the child will need to be in school to be aware for what is happening in school. So this sleep keeps reducing. So now this happens by the time an individual is getting to 60, 70, the, what happens is that the, the quantity of sleep they are able to achieve is also reduced. Then there could be what we call the advanced, uh, advanced uh, phase 
of our circadian region. That is, the, the old people, they tend to fall asleep earlier than they wake up earlier than the, the younger people. So you see them, they, they, they are awake as early as three o'clock, four o'clock. You know, so they may be complaining of not sleeping, but what we do most of the time when they come to sleep clinic is we try to look at the, the their sleep efficiency. We, we try to look at the, the total number, I mean, the number of hours they are able to sleep in the night. Then we also try to see how they function during the day. So this will give us an idea whether the sleep is okay for them or not. But the, 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 the main thing is that as people get older the ability to, to uh, sleep reduce thank you so much dr olajide obembe from the federal neuropsychiatric hospital in yaba that's been a wonderful talk and thank you also at home for being there and listening in on the show let's do it another time i am mary alale yusuf have a great day.